This video, I'll go over Mac productivity tips that are simple and that I actually use. The first one is not even related to macOS. Productivity is so overcomplicated. It just comes down to knowing what to do and then sitting down and doing it. If you do that, then you're a hundred million times more productive than when you try to do something unimportant, but productively with keyboard shortcuts, macros. Just doing the important thing is productive by itself. Ask yourself, is this essential? And only then try being productive at that thing. There's this thing called the Eisenhower matrix. If you haven't seen it before, here it is. We have things that are not important and then important, and then things that are urgent and not urgent. At the bottom right, we have not urgent, not important. A good rule is to completely burn all of these things. Send them straight to Mordor. Eliminate everything in this square. Then we have the urgent but not important. This is usually something you still have to do, but it really doesn't require you knowing a lot about it. Anyone can do it, or a robot could do it. So think of how you can automate these things, maybe batch them together. They're not important, but they kind of need to get done. Now top left, we have urgent and important, which means you should probably do them right now. And lastly, the most neglected square is important but not urgent. This is reading a book, exercising, finally learning that new skill that you've been putting off for years. These are the things that seem not urgent, but they're the type that compound. You don't see the results from these things immediately, but later down the line, they pay big dividends. So did I just clickbait you into a self-improvement video that's titled macOS productivity tips? Nobody knows. The first thing is to never position your apps like this, right next to each other. This is a Windows user's natural habitat, but macOS doesn't really play nice with Windows side by side like this. Because if you want to say copy something like this, completely innocent piece of text here. And then if I want to paste it here, I would have to click once to activate this window and only then I can click into the search bar, which would reveal my search history. This is mega annoying if you want to copy and paste things from one application to the other. But there's a way to get around this and it's to use the super scary keyboard shortcut command tab. Of course, you probably knew that this is a feature, but switching apps like this immediately highlights the other window. If these windows Windows are from the same app like Google Chrome, you can switch between them with command and the tilde key. So this cycles between the windows of the same application that I have open. So if I only had two Chrome windows open, doing this would switch from one to the other. The effect is not very visible because they're not full screen, but if they're full screen, they just switch from one to the other. And learning this or the command tab keyboard shortcut will shave off that one mouse click from your life. Also, you probably noticed that I'm doing this, and this is an app called Rectangle, it lets you snap windows to the edges of your screen, just like on Windows, and it also lets you create custom keyboard shortcuts for snapping. So when I have a window selected and hold Option, Command, Up, it will maximize. Then if I do right, it moves to the right, left to the left, and bottom to its original position. Another thing that I just recently started doing is setting a timer. As you may know, macOS didn't used to have a timer app, but recently it got a revolutionary update, which added the clock app, which lets you set a timer. We didn't have this one year ago. Moreover, you can set multiple timers. If you scroll down, there's even recent timers. Could you believe it? So whenever you're doing something boring or that you don't feel like doing, just set a timer. It will add that one extra step before you start procrastinating. You'll have to stop the timer. And for me, that often helps to just keep going. Also, if I have a timer running and I feel that sudden urge to procrastinate, I often look at the timer, see that there's 11 minutes left, and think to myself, might as well just finish it. And also, it prevents you from burnout, since once the timer ends, you just wapow. Now, if you're using the trackpad and not a mouse, I highly recommend going into trackpad settings and then turning it almost off all the way up. The default speed is somewhere over here and it's super slow. Your finger just gets friction burns. The trackpad is also very precise. So if you slow down your finger, the mouse acceleration will decrease and you'll be able to do fine movements with the cursor. But when you need to quickly close out the window because your mom came in the room, you can just do it faster. It's probably faster to close windows with command W instead. Now on top of the trackpad is the keyboard and improving it using the keyboard is going to increase your 
productivity across the board. I'm talking both typing speed and keyboard shortcuts. Trying to use just the keyboard and not the mouse or the trackpad will feel like you're handicapped at first. But once you break your fingers a couple of times and learn those shortcuts, they will get punched into your muscle memory and you'll become so much faster compared to using your mouse. For the typing speed, there are two classic websites that I would recommend. The first one is called Monkey Type. You just go on here and start typing. It will set a 30 minute timer and tell you how many words per minute you can type. Okay, totally doing this for the first time. Okay, first try, first try. Oh, first try. Okay, I'm happy with the 100. And the next website, which is a little more frustrating because you have to compete with other people, is called Type Racer. You just enter a typing race and you have to type this out faster than other people. You get motivated until you lose. Now, one cool tip when practicing typing tests is to not look at the word that you're typing, but look at the next word or even two words after it. Of course, try never looking at your keyboard. You probably already instinctively know where the keys are on the keyboard. It's the same thing like with keyboard shortcuts. You just have to force yourself to do it a couple of times and then it will become muscle memory. You will be able to type eyes closed. There are also these two things on the keyboard right below the F and the J key where you're in fingers should rest and the other fingers should go on the letters next to them this is called the home row and theoretically you should be typing with all of your fingers as you can see I am NOT so there's room for improvement but just doing one race on type racer every day or one test on monkey type and actually trying to look at the screen while you're typing will significantly improve your typing speed on a good day I'm stuck on something like 95 words per minute on type racer and I just can't break the barrier. Next, when you need to search for something, instead of going to your browser and then typing something into the search bar, you can get there a lot faster by using either Spotlight or Alfred, which is essentially just a replacement app for Spotlight. And if I search through here, by the way, the keyboard shortcut is Command Space, it will give me the same result in Google. Also, if you're using Alfred, you can click Command Comma to go to its settings, and here you can set up Web Search, which can essentially act pretty much the same as your browser bookmarks. So if I open Alfred and say channel, it will take me to my YouTube channel. And there are many different presets here that you can choose. Also, you can search within websites. So if I press command space to open Alfred, I can say Y and it immediately searches YouTube for whatever the next thing is that I'm going to put here. So it's a lot faster to search things up with Alfred compared to opening your browser and then doing it from there. And it's the same for apps. If I want to find a folder instead of going to my finder and then looking for it there, I can click command space, add another space, which means that I want to search for a file. And if I want to find, say, this folder here, I'll say stop reading my folder names and I can immediately get inside of it and start doing whatever I want. Also, there's a cool trick I recently figured out and it's that if you find a file, you can pick it up and drag it straight from Alfred. So right now this picture is inside of this folder, but I grabbed it from Alfred and I can just place it on my desktop. So it took the file from this folder and then placed it on my desktop straight from Alfred. I didn't even have to navigate here. To add a custom search into Alfred, you can click add custom search and then put the website's URL here. So HTTPS YouTube.com, for example. And then this is the keyword that you're going to be typing into Alfred to look up that website. I'll just say YT. Here you can also add an icon for this search. So if I go to macosicons.com, I can pick an icon for YouTube. Let's say this one and I can drag it onto here here, which will add this icon into the Alfred search. The title is whatever you want it to be. So I'll say YouTube. Now, the next time I open Alfred and say YT, it will suggest youtube.com and I can click enter to quickly go into my favorite procrastination platform. The next thing is from within your browser. Right now, my Safari seems clean, but in reality, I have like a hundred tabs open because they're hidden inside of my tab groups. If I click here, you can see there are a bunch of tab groups that I've created. And this is good for two things. 
things. One, it keeps your work separated. So if I want to learn something new, I'll just go into my L Ascent tab group. And if I want to procrastinate, I'll go into this one. And the second thing is that segmenting the things that you're doing actually helps you do them better. Because if I go into my landing page tab group and start working on the landing page of my YouTube course, then it's a lot harder for me to switch to something else because I have to go here and then go into another tab group to do something else. Whereas if you have everything in one workspace, it's super easy to lose focus and then jump to another thing. So if you're using Safari, you can go on a website, then right click on a tab, choose move to tab group and new tab group, which will create a new tab group with that tab. Then you can name your tab group and go back to the start page to create a new one. And you can manage your tab groups with this icon here or rather just hide it and use this downward arrow to switch between tab groups because it's easier. In Google Chrome, this works slightly differently. So if I go into a website, I can right click on the tab and choose add to new tab group. And this created a new tab group. I can even pick a color. I can also name the tab group. And if I have any more tabs open, I can select them and move them into the tab group. If I'm not working on this group, I can collapse it and focus on something else. Also, you can select multiple tabs if you hold command and then click on those and then you can move them all together. And most browsers have tab groups or you can install an extension and it will add that feature for Firefox, for example. But let's quit this resource hoarder. Also, you might have noticed that when I go to YouTube, either on my Safari or on my Chrome browser, the home page is empty. And that's on purpose because one of the most important things when trying to be productive is to not get distracted by something else. And so often when I'm doing something and it gets just a little too hard, I just command T youtube.com and in two seconds, I'm already watching a video. So seeing no videos here adds that little extra step that I have to take to turn this off in order to watch something. And that's usually enough to keep me focused. So you can do this with an extension. The one for Safari is called Focus for YouTube. You can go into the App Store and search for Focus for YouTube. Never mind, it's not on the App Store. To install it, you can look for Focus for YouTube on Google. And I'm pretty sure this is the one. And it seems like this extension has been updated to integrate with this extension. So if you already have AdGuard installed, I'll leave a link for it in the description, you don't really need to download Focus for YouTube separately. In fact, I'll just disable it here. So to enable it, go into releases, click on this one, which is the latest release, then copy this link here, open AdGuard, go into filters, and at the bottom, you'll see custom. You'll need to enable it, then click on the custom filter, add custom filter, and then paste in what you just copied and subscribe. So theoretically, if I reload YouTube, it should still be blocked. Yes. So now this extension just works with AdGuard. If you don't have AdGuard, then you can go back into this page, click on this plus one release, and then scroll down until you see Focus for YouTube v1.1. And under Assets, you'll be able to download focusforyoutube.app. Click on it, it will download, then double click to extract, and then go into Go and Applications to install it. If you drag it in here, it will install. I already have it installed, so I'll click Replace. Then open it, so Focus for YouTube and it says it can't be opened because Apple cannot check it for malicious software. If this happens, go back to where it is. So go and applications, then look for it. Also a quick tip, if you're inside of a folder, you can start typing out whatever it is that you're searching for and it will jump to that item. So it doesn't only have to be the first letter. I don't have to keep clicking F to find focus for YouTube. Instead, I can quickly type the first few letters and it will jump to that app. So anyway, to open it, hold control, right click and open while still holding control and then you can open it. Now go into Safari, command comma to open its settings and enable focus for YouTube here. But it's probably just easier to integrate it within the AdGuard extension. So that's for Safari. If you're using a Chromium browser like Arc or Chrome, you can go into the Chrome web store and install another extension called Unhook. It's also highly customizable so you can choose what you want to hide. And speaking of increasing friction for things that you don't want detracting from your focus, you can reduce friction for things that you want to focus on. For example, instead of having YouTube open every single time that you open your laptop, you can have something like a book open right on your desktop, or you can have your homework open, or whatever the important thing is, whatever's on the top right of the Eisenhower matrix. That way, a thing that you can procrastinate with will be the secondary thing, and the first thing that you'll see will be the thing that you actually care about. So increase friction for things that you don't want, and decrease friction for things that you want to do. 
Also, another great app is called Self Control. I use it to block the YouTube Studio, which shows YouTube analytics. Because one day I opened my browser history and I noticed that I go there like 60 times a day. So now I just click Start Block, input my password, and if I try to go there, I just can't. So instead of increasing friction, which didn't really work before, I just completely deleted the option for me to go there. Next, make it more beautiful. Clean your keyboard, change the wallpaper. This one's from my wallpaper pack, link in the description. Maybe change your appearance color in the settings, your mouse pointer, set your computer to dark or light theme. It will make it feel new and fresh. And for me, changing something up makes me want to work with it more. It's just like buying a new thing. If you buy a new angle grinder, when it's new and shiny, you want to keep using it. You want to Keep grinding. Okay, so that's it for the productivity tips I use. There weren't any fancy keyboard shortcuts or any life-changing techniques, but I hope that these simple things were still helpful. Yoink!